All right, so vertical shift is the second transformation. And again, this one is another easy one. Um, you just don't mix it up with amplitude. So with vertical shift, here's another definition here. I'm going to pull this out. This moves the whole graph or if you want to say function up or down so it moves the whole function up or moves the whole function down and with this if you remember back when it did the regular transformations or other transformations that was what was on the back of the function so that was like that um, that C on the back of the function so here when we write this again Sorry. Cosine. That is cosine, not sine, my fault. So cosine. And again, we know here this is the amplitude. And this part here is our vertical shift. And nine times out of 10, it's gonna be on the back, um, but there could be a point where it's in the front or it could, they could move it around and we'll talk about that. But again, the vertical shift is the H. So it's gonna move the whole function up and move the whole function down. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do an example again, example um, two. Let's make this in red. It's example two. And we're going to graph this following function. So we're going to graph y equals cosine x plus four. So again, we're going to go back to our parent graph to be able to graph this out and all the good stuff. But also here, our vertical shift, or h, is equal to 4. That's our vertical shift. So it means that with this before, we talked about when it's a plus 4 on the back, that means everything goes up. And if it's a negative 4 on the back, everything goes down. The same thing happens here. This is going to go up 4 places. The whole function is going to move up four places. Okay, so again, when we graph this out, we're going to do the same, the same idea when it came to the amplitude. So graph, draw that out, and we're going to do number one is label the graph again. In here with our tick marks and all the good stuff we're going to label it the same way again so pi over 2 pi 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi and again with that you're going to have to know those so it's not one of those things of well mr hall i kind of remember one of them or i can remember two of them but i can't remember the other ones you have to remember them all guys you got to find a way to remember them you have to find a way because if not this whole thing's gonna be messed up and I don't want you just guessing when it comes to like exams or tests or anything. I want you to know what's going on because you're too smart to just be guessing to try to figure out what the answer is because you just can't figure out nothing. That's not cool. I don't need you doing that. All right, so step two, after we graph, um, we label the graph, then we, again, graph our parent graph. And let's change the colors here. Let's make this uh, green. We're going to graph the parent graph. And here we're dealing with the cosine graph. Cosine. So if we come back to our parent graph for cosine, we're looking at this part here. 
So it's here at zero one, and it comes down, then here, and then back up, and then back up to one. So it goes from one, zero, negative one, zero, back up to one. And hopefully you use that same function for the last practice we did, because that was not the sine function that you're supposed to grasp, you're supposed to grab the cosine function. All right, so again, plotting these points for the parent graph. And again here, it should be a pattern that flows. So you don't really even have to remember like um, all the different points and make sure you remember each step. Really, if you can remember the pattern, just do the pattern and follow it and you're done. I love patterns, so that helps it out for me to know how to do things. I love to do patterns. So here, we're making dotted line for this one because it's not the final graph. Okay, so we have that. Now, if we had an amplitude, step three would be to graph the amplitude. Here, the number that's in front of cosine is one. So that means our amplitude is one, so therefore there's no amplitude. So that means there's no amplitude. If you want to say no amp, that's fine too. So there's no amplitude there. So we don't do anything with the graph because there's no amplitude. We can't change anything. All right, so then the last thing is the final step, step four. This is our graph, our vertical shift. And when we graph our vertical shift, and here we say h equals 4, so everything's going to go up 4. So on this one, because our vertical shift is 4, every point moves. So every point's going to move on the graph, and in this case, every point's going to move up 4 places. So every single point on this graph is going to move up four. So let's go and do that really quickly. So that's one, two, three. So that's one, two, three, four. So when we do this, that one needs to go up four times. So if that one is there, if we go up four times, that means it's going to be a bit five. So here, we're going to be at one. We're going to go up one, two, three, four. At zero here, it's going to go up one, two, three, four. Then we go up from negative one, go up one, two, three, four. Then this is going to go up four. One, two, three, four. This goes up one, two, three, four. And we're going to graph it out again using the same um, function, the same curve. And again, make sure it's curvy not sharp edges. Sharp edges mean you wrong. You know you wrong. All right, and that's it. Everything just moved up four. And I'm going to just do these arrows here. But on your paper, you don't have to do that. this part here. I'm just doing this to show everything moved up four. Everything just goes up four. Every single point. And that's it. That's all you got to do.